Motion by helmet. Welcome to Minutes by Minute. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we're here to talk about what goes on in the village, the township. You know, those government people that make laws and regulations that affect you out there. That's right, Elgin. And whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard, Addison Township, or Oxford Township, these are the people that you went and elected, and we'll have that opportunity in the future. And um, the committees and the commissions that make decisions that directly affect you, whether you chose to go to that meeting or not, and the result can be a taxing situation. That's right. <laughs> and it may pose other th situations as well. One of those things we were talking about is humor. There's humor that bubbles to the top or sinks to the bottom. This guy has a tendency to dig it from the bottom and gather it from the top. That's right. I prefer the cream. <laughs> <laughs> right. the, one other thing is, of course, minutes by minute is an abbreviated version of what the meeting actually uh, was in terms of time. We run about a half an hour and we cover two meetings if we can on this program. Uh, a single meeting at one of these um, mm, sp special occasions uh, could run anywhere from a half hour, hour, two hours. Especially if it's a torches and pitchfork meeting. Could be. But. <laughs> could run days. You never know. But you might even have special if, meetings. If you choose to see that entire meeting, you can go to our website, occtv.org. Click on Programs. Everything is in reverse state order. It even has a drop-down menu if you want to tunnel to that particular area, like the village of Oxford or the village of Leonard or Oxford Township, and you can see them all. Mm -hmm. We don't edit uh, anything out. It's completely verbatim. And what is that website? OCCTV.org. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Get an A for effort, I think. It yes. worked. Okay. Uh, you can check into it. There's a lot of other programs out there as well. That's OCCTV.org. And uh, let's talk about a couple of meetings that occurred, uh, one on January 14th, the other one on uh, January 20th. The January 14th meeting was the village council meeting. Uh, Joe Frost is the president of, the, of that particular uh, group. Uh, Dave Bailey, who was absent at this particular meeting. Uh, Helmuth, uh, Maureen Helmuth serves on this board. She does other boards as well. I think one of them is the planning commission. Okay. And I think she might be on ZBA also, but she's very active in the community, always has been. Uh, Kate Logan is one of the newest members of this board. And uh, Miss Kemp, uh, who serves on this board also. And she just joined the uh, Pollyann Trail. I hear she's the new secretary, replacing a notorious yes. person. <laughs> she had a unanimous vote. <laughs> they said, who would like to be secretary? Everybody stepped back. <laughs> so anyway, she you was nice going, enough what? to take it what? on. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, uh, I mean, we really appreciate her taking that responsibility. And she says, well, I've never done this before. And I said, well, I didn't either a couple of years ago, and that's what happened to me. <laughs> so anyway, it's uh, history repeating itself, huh? Yeah. Uh, Terry Onika, who's a village clerk, was there, and uh, Joe Madure, who's the village manager. Bob Davis, the attorney, who is the shadow that follows everybody. The shadow knows, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let me see. The, he, uh, Joe um, Frost wanted to point out at the beginning of the meeting that he apologized for people that showed up at 6 o'clock or 6.30 yeah, for the normal time for the village council meeting. As, you may or may not know, that time is moved to 7 o'clock p.m. Oh. And actually all the meetings, you know, now, Planning Commission, all of them, um, 7 p.m. So no one will not be surprised. Yeah, right. Not 6 p.m., not 6.30, but 7 p.m., folks. Does that include the DDA? Uh, that does not include the DDA. The DDA usually is about 3 o'clock. Um, 3 o'clock? On Wednesdays. No. Yes. No. There's, yeah. No. Oh, not the DDA. I'm <laughs> yeah, you're right. Pollyann Trail. No, DD, that, that includes the DDA no. as well. I'm sorry. Uh, right. The reason why they, they moved, of course, is so that a lot of business people that close up their right. shops right. could not make, you know, these meetings, and now they can. All right. So, okay. You know, I, somehow I was thinking, Pollyann Trail. Hmm. Why is he talking about Pollyann Trail? I don't know. Well, we shouldn't start <laughs> off by saying happy trails. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway, um, they did the pledge, of course, uh, the preliminaries out of the way, the agenda was approved. <coughs> presentations, ah, no presentations, that's okay. good, we'll move along here. Uh, public hearing, CDBG was a public hearing that was going to commence. And, CDBG? Yeah, CDBG. And do you know what it is? You do. Yeah. I'm going to test you. What is it? 
Why, it's Community, community Development block, block Grant. Yes, very good. Uh, Is that a mental block? How many years have we been doing this? Do you Don't remember? ask. <laughs> okay, we kind of forget. Maybe you folks out there can remind us again, but it's been quite a few years, and we've covered a number of these community development Sooner or later, we'll get it right. <laughs> Sooner or later, we will get it right. Maybe, maybe, might, could, possibly, don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, consent agenda, uh, correspondence, consisted of correspondence and letters and reports, and they re, uh, were received and filed, as normally they are. Minutes uh, for December 10th, 2019, and also the bills for, get this, $283,000, $349.63. Hmm, right on check. A you penny here, that. a penny there, pretty yeah. soon you're talking real money. <laughs> yeah. As far as a dollar here, $10 there, $100 there, you know, causes, that's kind of the way it goes. Causes all the machinery <laughs> to come to a halt when something's missing. It also keeps the uh, village moving. That's and right. actually, they're, they're in pretty good shape right now with all good. the things that are happening. Uh, they just paved uh, a section of Burdick Street not long ago. I think they bonded mm -hmm. that. Um, and there's a lot of things going on with M24, of course, which they're involved in as just well. Just in case you hadn't noticed. Yeah, in case you haven't <laughs> noticed. Those yellow or orange barrels out there that keep popping in front of your vehicle, hmm, <laughs> that would be MDOT. Okay, Michigan, Michigan Department of Transportation. Okay. But they uh, are busy. They are very busy. And they're going to be busy all the way through, more likely, November okay. of 2020. Uh, it's going to really get busy when they start tearing up the street sometime about March. Okay. That's when the reroute will right. start. Right. You folks are probably wondering, what are they doing out there now then? <laughs> They're supposed to be here till March. Well, they're doing a lot of probing, trying to find out where the water lines are and everything along that line. Are they line, having a special lines. meeting, or maybe they already had it, about informing the public about well, how it's all going. Actually, there's... It's over at the library, I believe. Right. Uh, we're actually going to cover this some degree because I'm going to talk about the DDA I right after ahead. this. You did jump ahead. You jump right on back, if you will. Okay. Shows you what you get for not telling me what you got there. <laughs> well, I don't want to spoil the surprise <laughs> or surprises that you might have here. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> this is a guy that has to know everything. So when I conceal it from him, he gets a little upset occasionally on the, on the side. And I get ahead of myself or <laughs> himself. He does. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Old business uh, was the next item. Uh, manager goals and objectives. Uh, they were discussed in the last meeting last month and actually was organized in the form of um, an agreement. Uh, and Joe Madura, of course, presented the agreement and approval uh, to the um, village council. Next one was the uh, clerk's goals and objectives. <clears throat> Excuse me. And again, they were reviewed at the previous month's uh, meeting. And uh, she made a summary, of course, of what her agreement was and signed it and forwarded that as well to the Village Council. And we'll talk more about this when we come back, folks, so don't go away. Welcome back to Minutes by Minute. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kennedy. And we are talking about the Village Council meeting that occurred. Um, and the next thing we want to talk about that went on that meeting was Dayton Street um, access plan uh, as an emergency route. And that was presented as a requirement or a need by the fire chief, Pete Schultz. And uh, what they needed to do as an emergency, be able to travel down Dayton Street. Right now, as you know, it's shut off. I mean, it has a, a barrier in the way. Yeah, the residents on Dayton Street have been <clears throat> fighting that pass through forever. For years. But now yeah. with the situation with M24, there's a necessity mm -hmm. for emergency vehicles to right. do that. Now there's one change to that though, and the way they fought it in years past, and that was they were trying to make that a permanent access through Dayton Street. I know. <clears throat> this is only a temporary situation. And uh, they, in order to make it temporary, they're going to, there's a hill there, you know, kind of a, a bunker or a, what do you call it? A berm? And they're going to have to... A mogul? Yeah, yeah, one of those. <laughs> and they're going to have to level that. And they're also going to have to trim some trees and cut a few bushes in there to, in order to access a 15-foot wide okay. uh, area that they can get through. And when it's all done, when the M24 is completed, the plan is to put it back pretty much the way it was. In other words, you won't have access to Dayton after, after the completion of the M24. Oh, there won't be a gate or anything? No. Okay. 
<clears throat> so that is the understanding, at least, of okay. the residents and also the village people. Yeah, that's a hot button <clears throat> issue for those residents. <laughs> it is, yes. Uh, let me see what else we've got. Residential rental uh, registration and inspection uh, ordinance discussion. That's what they had as a discussion. <clears throat> Originally, if you will recall, we talked about this, um, that the fire chief felt that there was some major safety issues involved in some of these homes that they had to go into. Uh, stairs were, you know, dangerous to climb. Uh, There's situations in electrical uh, connections where there's about 15 different connections hooked to a... Are, are, is, are you saying that is a code violation? It would be a code violation and a safety violation um, from a standpoint that especially, somebody could be... Especially if they were going to sell the house. Right. Or if, you know, somebody is renting it and something should happen uh -huh. in that home and fire department can't get to the individual because of the... Um, restrictions you know in the area as far as physical restrictions so he wants those things evaluated and so they're looking at a registration plan for uh, you residential renters out there make sure the the home is safe for the residents that you're that renting is the renter not the, the rentee. renter not the rentee right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway that being said um, they said the first step is to register the rentals and there's a lot involved in terms of um, follow-up on it and inspection. How much, how much rental property is completely informal and not like registered as a business or whatever? They don't really know that. Oh. Yeah, that's one of the things they need to know. Oh. Like, fire chief said he is he and his men have gone into homes that have uh, one or two families, you know, extra <laughs> in the in the home. Uh, they're living in the basement or whatever. And he said there's no way that they could tell until there's an emergency, which in this case was a fire emergency. Right, right. So, and dangerous. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> a while back, you just heard about a... So does rent, when you say renter, you know, in some cases, you know, uh, children move back into the family home mm -hmm. and occupy a portion of it. Right. Would I, that I also qualify? No, I don't think that's a concern that they have. I don't think they're, those kids are renting uh, property. Um, I could be wrong. In fact, they might be giving you know some. No, it, may, it may not be one money, person. It may be an entire family that moved back in. Could be uh, families. I don't think it has anything to do with it. And I don't think they're pursuing that part. We're okay. looking at somebody who is a renter. Okay, where there's money an passing property, hands. Pa money's passing hands under a either a verbal agreement or a contractual agreement with with the property owner. So the verbal ones are hard to track down. They are. <laughs> Let me prove that it was verbal. Hey, they're gone. Where'd they go? <laughs> but there was a, um, uh, a group of, uh, of people, I guess, from either Iran, Iraq, or Mexico, and Detroit about two years ago. Good they spread. Were living, huh? That's a yeah. good spread. Good spread. <laughs> See, I didn't want to be partial to any group. <laughs> And there might have even be, been a few Americans hiding down there. But anyway, uh, they found something like about 12 people living in the basement when there was a fire, and most of them died in the fire because oh. they couldn't get to them. So that was an issue that Detroit had probably about three, four years ago. And certainly... That's the uh, old two-exit thing. Right. And Chief uh, Schultz certainly doesn't want to see anything like that happen no. in Oxford. No. Very diligent. Okay. Um, let me see what else I have. They said that they're going to have a workshop with the uh, members of the board on January 27th at 7 p.m. So you folks are interested in tuning in on what's going on. You know, with this new ordinance that is a proposal, then you might want to attend that. Okay? Uh, new business. Uh, reprogramming, pr reprogramming of CDBG uh, for non-compliant, uh, which is what the village is, you know, as far as the steps coming into the uh, village offices, that kind of thing. They're non-compliant? Non-compliant. And the door, which glides, one of them is automatic, the other one is not. That's not compliant. Was it compliant um, at one time? Years ago, there probably wasn't an or or a compliant ordinance uh, requiring, you know, two doors and step requirements. So they're not invoking the grandfather clause. No. <laughs> and there's no way actually for handicapped people to access no, while true. going up the stairs. That's true. And coming down is not so bad, you just give them a push and they roll down. But 
<laughs> that's not a good thing either. So anyway, so there's, those areas are to be addressed, and actually CDBG can handle uh, those complaints up to about $14,000 worth of work. Oh. Uh, they're saying the bathrooms aren't compliant, are not compliant. Uh, let me see, the counter isn't compliant, uh, nor are the door access uh, to the various offices non-compliant. So there's a lot of things that need to be fixed up, and so they're planning on using a good portion of this money that came in. And by the way, it'll take a year before the money actually does come in. Right. So, but do they know what kind of a design they want? Well, they'll go over that with uh, with the architect or okay. you know individual that's doing the, the layout, the contractor. So no, there's some preliminary work that needs to be done. At this point, they're just discussing it as to what what route they want to take. Um, and there's one area that uh, Miss, Mrs. Logan was concerned about, and that's snow removal. And uh, it's a public service funds to be used for that purpose. Also, what about fish? They normally donate. Mrs. Mrs. Logan being? She's on the board. Okay. Kate, Kate Logan. Okay. Yeah. So she had uh, concerns about that, um, but again, uh, the Rel money is to be used from the uh, public service funds. Okay. So, and not necessarily from the um, DB or the uh, CDBG you know, funding. Okay. So, quite a discussion there. Um, there's also a, a point of 2020 recreation passport grant applications that have been filled out, and it's for a seawall on the beach, and. To pick and for picnic tables and ADA to be compliant uh, for the beach area for residents and visitors that you don't want to use the beach. Additional uh, van parking also was requested, and ADA for grills so people could you know grill uh, without uh, getting a step ladder to get up to it. Uh, this was all approved, by the way, uh, to refurb the uh, recreational parks. Okay. Okay. So you can have some nice parks. You do, you do have some nice parks now. But you're going to even have better parks down the line. And we'll talk about better when we come back right after this. by minute I'm Elgin Nichols and I'm Dave Kenny and one last thing concerning the Village Council Police Department recommendation to uh, put stop signs on Denison and Jersey so that looks like that's going to be go forward what do people do now they run with no stop sign <laughs> they just cross wherever they need to cross so anyway so uh, it would seem like people would be scared to death and they'd no. stop anyhow. Right. The police, they, you think they would because that's a busy crossroad. Yeah. But anyway, approved. Um, it was approved by the council, and the request was made uh, for three hundred sixty dollars total by the police chief. So, in lieu of that, let's go on to the DDA meeting. Downtown Development Authority. There was uh, there was a town hall meeting held at six o'clock p.m. Town uh, hall. Yes, town, town ominous, hall. Ominous. Ominous. And that's about the twenty uh, M twenty four uh -huh. reconstruction project. And what's going on in the um, streetscape and all kinds of things were discussed. And if you want to catch more, you can go to OCCTV.org. Yep. Check it out. It's out there in the full meeting, and it took about an hour uh, for that meeting. And then right after that meeting, um, they had the regular DDA meeting at 7 o'clock p.m. And again, don't forget, all these meetings in the village are going to be 7 o'clock, not 6 o'clock, as they were before. So do check it. Make sure that you're there on time and not too early. Okay. <laughs> uh, roll call was taken. Nicole Ellsworth serves on that board. Dorothy Johnston, uh, Pete Schultz, Sue Oles, uh, Elgin Nichols, that would be me, Rod Charles, and let me see, Allison Kemp serves on the board. So they went forward. Public comment? None. Uh, current agenda was the approval of proposed agenda. 
uh, approval of the December 16th, <coughs> excuse me, 2019 regular meeting minutes. And all those were approved, <coughs> as well as the approval of amended November 18th, 2019 regular meeting minutes. Ah, that's all stuff, again, you can find on our website. <coughs> Oops, you can on this one because we had a camera problem, so they didn't what? record it. Oh. So the information you're going to get is right here, so you can believe it or not. Or not. <laughs> right. <coughs> so the next thing was report. Uh, did, we get half, did we get half a program or none? None. None. <laughs> police report, uh, code enforcement report, DPW report, Department of Public uh, Works, <coughs> excuse me, executive director report, communications report, and revenue expense report and financial statement, which you know a thing or two about. And that was all approved. <coughs> Payment of bills in the amount of $11,978.32. Again, get, to, get out your checkbook. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, unfinished old business, M24 update uh, was provided by uh, Mr. Pape, uh, the executive director. Has anything new popped up? I mean, you know, they're doing an awful lot of infrastructure well, uh, remediation right now. They're finding all kinds of archives, you know, uh, buried, and they're bringing them forward. And actually, uh, the request was made by the Historical Museum to transport those over to them. And oh, the really? Yeah, oh, wow. and the agreement was, was made between uh, Glenn Pape and the village manager and so forth to do that. So that's where things will end up there that well, are hope, historical. Well, I hope that they don't <clears throat> freeze everything so the archaeologists can come in. <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. The <laughs> next thing was a CIP update. Now, you probably never heard of that before, but that's a capital improvement plan. And what are you doing with the funds that you have? You know, what, what are you looking forward to do? <clears throat> and there's a number of things that they want to move forward with, and that's repairing sidewalks. Um, oh, let me see. All kinds of things. Yeah, anyhow, I did have all kinds of things. Oh, there they are, over here, hiding. Okay, refresh all metal uh, furnishings, uh, sandblast them, powder coat, that kind of thing for outside the benches. Uh, sidewalk repairs, I mentioned that. Um, let me see, repair the steps to the gazebo, because they're falling apart, so yeah. they need to be repaired. Uh, new street fixtures, um, let me see, in East and West Burdick and uh, Hudson Streets. Um, they're looking at you know, changing those fixtures, lights. Uh, parking deck, uh, 50 spaces, looking for that. Uh, Where would that be? Well, that hasn't been disclosed yet, but that's one of the things that they would hope to do in the future, because you know, parking is a real bugger down there. Well, if you try to yeah. go like to the Ox on a Friday night, good right. luck. <laughs> well, that particular project alone would be 1.5 million, so they need to get grants or whatever they need to do to do that. <clears throat> Christmas decorations. Now, you, you've been through um, uh, some of these towns that have totally decked out, you know, Christmas decorations. Oh, yeah. So yeah. they're looking to provide something like that to get uh, drivers' attention. Not to take their eyes off the road, not for long, but to, you know, take notice to Oxford Village. Um, let me see. Mast arms for Burdick and 24. Those are for the lights rather than just having, having wires crossed, you know, with the lights hanging in them, in, in, on those wires. So there's a lot of things that this uh, board is uh, looking forward to do or this particular um, group of people. And there's about uh, four people that sit on this board. But and there's no timeline. So there's no timeline at this point, but there, the money is available. Actually, DDA is in the black. And talking about that, um, they have a number of town hall meetings which are coming up. One was January 20th, which I just attended. February 17th is the next one. They'll be held in the uh, village uh, conference room or, you know, area. You know, the separate room. And these are DDA? These are DDA. Okay. And presented by DDA and the village as well. Uh, so September 21st, October 19th, and if you have a pencil, November 16th, December 21st <coughs> would be the last one and they will provide the latest update of information that's going on with M24. And one other thing, you can use your computer and go to restore, R-E-S-T-O-R-E, m-24.com. And that site will give you the latest day-by-day -day information on how M24 and MDOT is handling the progress 
uh, going on for the M24 reconstruction. So check it out. That's restore m dot, or I'm sorry, m dash 24 dot com. So you have no reason to find out, uh, not find out what's going on. Also, you can go to the uh, village and they have all the maps, latest maps for detours, that kind of thing. And if you attend these uh, sessions I'm talking about in town hall, you'll learn more as to what's going on and who to contact and who to work with. <clears throat> a lot of the... Um, have they set a date, by the way, for when the traffic will be rerouted for uh, traffic going north through Oxford? All that schedule at this point can be found on that website. You go out to it. It'll tell you when they're going to begin, where they're going to begin, and how long it's going to take. How about that? But you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it may be change. Oh, it may good. change. Okay. Because, uh, for example, you never know um, if they're going to show up at a certain date or not, depending on the sure. weather. It depends what they're It depends on too. what their schedule is, sure. you know, and what may have changed their schedule. So all those things uh, kind of pop up and, and they you can... You never know what you're going to find when you start digging. It's kind of like chocolates, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, a story on chocolates, right? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. That's pretty much it. Um, for me, what do you got coming up? I have a couple of meetings. On February 3rd at 7 o'clock, the Village of Oxford Zoning Board of Appeals, ZBA, will be meeting. Maybe. Hmm. Check on it because sometimes if they don't have anything to talk about, they won't have a meeting. And on a lot of times they don't. the 4th <laughs> of February at 7 o'clock, the Village of Oxford Planning Commission will be meeting. And that's all I got. That's it, huh? Yeah. You're sticking to it. Sticking to it. Okay. Just like I'm peanut a, butter. <laughs> I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. Catch you next time right here on Minutes by Minute. See you then.